Okay, this is just an introduction to um, melodic minor, or what some people call ascending melodic minor, or jazz minor, and how it um, applies to uh, dominant chords. Um, there's a... Uh, um, just to know where I'm coming from, just so you know that my point of view is that I, um, I don't learn theory to know theory. I learn theory to apply it to the instrument that I play. And I try to um, I try to approach everything I learn theoretically in as something that I can use as a tool to become a better banjo player to you know extend my ears to extend a technique to to become more creative and more uh, improvisationally fluent. Those are all those are all things that I, are my goals. I love to just. I think I'm lazy. I think I love to just noodle is the bottom line. But it actually turns into music every once in a while, believe it or not. Um, the um, my inspiration to learn this stuff wasn't just something I came up with myself. Although now I have a definite way that I look at it, it um, it is something that was initially um, initially started from. Um, I guess maybe I should show you my face for a change. Huh? It was initially something that um, that I got from uh, Pat Cloud in probably about 1980. He um, he gave me uh, four pages that are posted in pics on my uh, banjo hangout page. But he gave me a couple of pages of stuff that basically intimidated me to the point where I thought I'll never learn this. the The idea of improvisation, the way he and jazz people thought of it, was completely over my head. I had no idea how to think of it. I just kind of would play until I found something that I liked the sound of and use that. And that worked for me for quite some time, but then as I started playing with better players, I found out that they, they not only knew more than I did, they knew more and knew how to apply it to their instrument to become better. So I, that became a goal. I started wanting to do that. Um, anyway, uh, Pat got me going in the early days because I was listening to more music that had broader harmonic contexts and more intricate linear ideas going on. I, I, I don't ever look, I've never looked at myself as a jazzer. I don't think that I am a jazzer at heart. I think basically I, I appreciate and love simple, mu simple music and that listening to jazz has always been a stretch for me. But I just decided to get to work and to try to become a better um, listener of jazz music and an ability to understand some of the richer um, context, which by the way isn't just jazz, it's modern, classical, and pretty much everything modern uh, draws from the harmonic context that jazz uh, has established in music. So anyway, Pat started me out. Um, I avoided it for about 20 years, <laughs> because it, uh, maybe not quite that long, but quite a while. And then I started playing in a band with a guy who was a Berkeley grad. I actually played with several Berkeley grads, and they're all fine players. And I just, you know, at one point decided to say, shoot, I want to find out what they, you know, how, do you guys, how, how did these guys learn what they know? And um, so my good friend Bud Nuanez, uh, Mark Small, who I think is still the editor of the Berkeley uh, paper there in, in Berkeley and Boston, and who's a great guitar player, great jazz player, um, and my friend, friend Bud Nuanas, who I played with for years and years in a band. Uh, he was is still in a band called Sea Wind, which had some hits in the '80s. Uh, great studio players from Los Angeles. Um, and um, I asked Bud for a lesson. He gave me a lesson uh, and basically started me out understanding how um, modal scale harmony, modal scales, and the harmony that they that it that they imply are the starting place, and you just have to get to work and do it. Um, as time went by, Bud gave me a, a video from John Schofield. It's an hour lesson that basically has taken me 10 years to even come close to comprehending. It's just so thick. Schofield is definitely thorough <laughs> in everything that he teaches. Um, and so a lot of my desire to understand what an alt scale is and how it, how it affects alt, an alt harmony, alt seven, alt dominant, chords um, came from uh, that from John Schofield and watching him uh, teach this class. I just watched it again on the way to work today. I've probably watched it at least 40 times and I get something new out here every time I watch it. It's uh, There's a lot of clips up on YouTube if you ever want to look just call, type in John Schofield improvisation and you'll get it. It's an old DCI uh, video that was shot in the I think early 80s. I'm guessing 82 or 83 but it might have been later than that 84, 85, 86. Um, then 
as of recent. Back to Schofield. Schofield helped me understand that a major scale and all the mo modal scales that are attached to it and all those harmonies, they're all something you can look at as one big block of information. I don't know if he even really taught it that way, but that's the way that I saw it. Um, it, it helped me also understand that a melodic minor or jazz minor, as the Berkeley folk call it, um, is a beautiful set of notes that includes a three and a seven of a dominant chord, which are the two most important notes, and then these wonderful tensions that so many jazz people use these days um, on all five chords. Uh, it's a beautiful set of, um, of tensions that, that become tense, and then they release, and they be, there's tension, then release, tension, and release. And so I just wanted to learn what, how those sounds uh, affected chords and scalar linear playing. Um, then, just a, just recently, a friend of mine gave me a video uh, that Emily Remler did. Emily is a, uh, a guitarist. She passed away in 1990. Brilliant uh, guitarist. She's played with people like John Schofield. And played. She was. She kind of made a name for herself as a um, as the uh, the New York chick in the great Latin bands, <laughs> Brazilian bands. And she um, she became a, a Latin jazz aficionado and. and has done a couple of really wonderful um, video series things. The one that I saw was called Advanced um, Jazz Improvisation, where she went to explain how she uses altered um, uh, the the melodic minor scales, jazz minor, and um, and she made it very very simple. There's also clips of her up on YouTube, and you can uh, resource those if you want to. The, what I brought out of it is what I'm going to do in this next little series. I'm going to show how to play a melodic minor scale what it is and then show you why I learn all seven modes of melodic minor not just so that they I know what they sound like individually but so that I can link them up on the banjo fingerboard. Five string banjo doesn't have a real wide range this way. It's got a range this way and I find as a banjo player I have to move a lot more than guitar players do because there's just you know on guitar you've got this wonderful set of octaves and, and expanse going this direction. Even if you don't move your hand, you can cover a lot of notes. On banjo, we just don't have that. We have to move around a lot. So knowing where to find those notes helps me out a lot. Anyway, that, this is just the, the intro to it. Um, I do not believe everybody needs to learn this. The great jazzers in the early days probably didn't, I don't know, most of them probably didn't have any idea what it was that we analyze these things as today. These are just tools to help some people learn how to play these things without it's just a different path everybody you know different paths for different folks and I, I understand that this is the way I got there uh, I didn't want to I'm not I'm not the type of person who likes to just learn something that somebody else has already done I want to know what was in their head when they came up with that or what was in their ears even if they didn't understand it in their head what was in their ears when when they came up with that so um, uh, you know Miles, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Coltrane, you know, all those guys plus a gazillion other people have um, have used the sounds that are available in the altered scale, which is derived from melodic minor, and the altered chord, altered dominant chord, which is a great sound. Um, and so that's that's what we're going to do. This is just my little blah blah introduction. Most of you have probably skipped it and aren't listening to me by now, and that's totally.